Hello, welcome to Safe Schools. I'm Curtis Graves. And I'm Andy Howard. Andy, how's it going, man? I'm good, Curtis. It's a really exciting day today. We're going to get a chance to start something new and exciting. We're going to talk about safe schools. That's the topic of our, our show. And the premise behind the show is to educate the public on issues that pertain to schools, uh, safety and a number of other things, right, Andy? Absolutely, Curtis. I, we want the public, uh, the members of the community, the school employees and students to know that this department, the Security Department of Mobile Public School System, is concerned with their well-being and safety. And we're going to, over the course of this program, present the community with lots of information about the resources available to them uh, provided through the community and, and various agencies that help this community, uh, this department, provide a safe environment for teaching and learning. And I think to do that, we're going to have to talk a little bit about ourselves just to give you a little insight on who we are. Andy, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a native Mobilian. I uh, lived here all my life. Uh, I graduated from Davidson High School. Um, went to college, uh, Jacksonville State University here in Alabama where I received two undergraduate degrees. One of my degrees is in political science. My other undergraduate degree is in criminal justice. I later attended Alabama State University where I received a degree in administration and supervision uh, as a master's degree. I'm as well a graduate of uh, Leadership Mobile here in Mobile. Um, I've been a resource officer now for over 30 years. Um, in the course of that time as a resource officer, I've also worked uh, outside to help and facilitate with other agencies, such as the Drug Ed Council, where I'm a facilitator. I've worked with uh, SWAP with the Southwest Alabama Police Academy as a facilitator. I've also worked with the University of South Alabama as a facilitator, where I taught uh, or, or lectured with them on subjects such as gangs and drugs. Uh, it was part of my experience uh, working with the school system and in the community. Wow. Kurt, what about yourself, man? I don't know if I can follow that one, man, but uh, I'm going to try. Uh, for, uh, I'm a graduate of Williamson High School. Uh, I have a master's degree in public administration from Troy University. Uh, I have a bachelor's in criminal justice from Fulton University. Uh, I've been in law enforcement for roughly around 22 years. Um, I've been a homicide investigator for Mobile PD. Uh, I've also uh, been a narcotics investigator for the Mobile Police Department as well. And I've also been uh, uh, a facilitator for the Mobile Police Department in child exploitation. Um, you know, short of that, uh, I've been with the school system for 12 years now. And I've enjoyed my, my tenure here, and I look forward to years to come. Well, Kurt, I think uh, we're going to have an exciting opportunity to share a lot of things with the public and the kind of experiences that you and I have hopefully will give us a basis or a template to supply information that will be educational, beneficial, and helpful to the community. Sounds great. Diesel is a very big industry and uh, I went into it in a two-year program at the Bryant Career Tech with Tony Tony. When Jacob graduated from the Bryant Career Center, he had earned his diesel credential. The Career Tech Center taught me a lot, with all the way from not knowing anything about a motor or engine to knowing pretty much every single moving part of them. MCPSS Career Tech, start your future today. The quality of education that I received from the Mobile County Public School System really prepared me for global success. Being uh, an international opera singer, I get to travel all across the world. And one of the most important aspects about that is being able to communicate and work with people. And the Mobile County Public School System really equipped me to be greatly successful worldwide. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Let's switch to ENERGY STAR light bulbs and stop burning through cash. 
Saving energy saves you money. Hey, welcome back. Uh, we have two guests with us right now. We have uh, Mr. William Duffy. He is the uh, Director of School Security for the Mobile County Public School System. Uh, welcome, Mr. Duffy. And we have mm -hmm. Sam Oakley, Resource Officer for the Mobile County Public School System as well. Uh, Mr. Duffy, um, <coughs> thanks for coming on the show. And uh, we'd like to start with a couple of questions about the security department with, in your position as the Director. Uh, one of the mm -hmm. first questions I have, of course, is tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up here in the school system and what your experience has been here. Certainly. Well, first let me say that uh, I uh, certainly appreciate the opportunity to be here on <coughs> your show today. And uh, my background uh, is, is similar uh, to, to yours. Uh, I was uh, with the Mobile Police Department for a number of years. I've actually been with the school system. Uh, I'm starting my 37th year with the school my system. Uh, <laughs> and I've been in a supervisory position with the security department for probably 35 or 36 of those. Uh, years. <coughs> so I have some uh, tenure with the system. Well, and you've been here since the very beginning of this program. Right, Kurt. I was uh, one of the first four resource officers hired um, and as a, a matter of fact I'm one of the only, the, the only uh, of the original four that are still here. And to add, he's our supervisor. <laughs> 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 so, All right. So with that, Mr. Duffy, could you tell us a little bit about the history of the security department here with Mobile County Public School System? Certainly. The, the, uh, the department has certainly evolved over the last 36 years. Um, although we have remained true to the original objective of the program when it was originally established, which was to establish a safe, secure, law-abiding atmosphere on our campuses that is conducive to learning. Um, so we, we remain consistent with that as our objective and our goals. Now certainly over the last 36 years with all of the uh, evolution of technology and the new tools that we have available to us, um, we've certainly taken advantage of those to continue to try to address and accomplish the, the, the goal as stated. Especially with the, <clears throat> the thing of social media being so prevalent now in certainly, society. Certainly. Uh, and, and as fact, social media is one of those things that uh, it's a wonderful thing uh, and it can be a, a nightmare for us exactly. because yeah. um, we're finding now, certainly in the last several years, that a lot of the issues that end up on our campuses that we deal with actually originate from social media issues uh, away from the campus, communication back and forth between students and groups and so forth. Well, Stephanie, I know that you said that you one of the original four resource yes. officers <clears throat> of all of the campuses that the school district has. Now, how many resource officers does the program consist of? And well, you, you know, we have around 90 school sites now, mm -hmm. okay. uh, and we have 12 resource officers. And those resource officers are assigned to clustering of school on a geographic basis uh, yeah, all resource officers have schools that are from K through 12. Uh, with the average, uh, the, the least uh, run around six assignments um, and up to about 10 or 11 assignments. And so there are, what, 12 high schools? Right, and there's 12 all, high schools. And re each resource officer is assigned, is assigned a high school right. and the feeder <clears throat> schools. Exactly. Right. So the resource, and, and that's why there's some um, uh, discrepancy between the number of schools assigned is because uh, the schools that feed those particular the high schools. Right. So, <clears throat> the right. primary task of a resource officer, investigator. Would exactly. That okay. um, you know, over the years, <clears throat> there's been a lot of confusion about the responsibilities from uh, putting us in a role of, say, a truant officer, um, or just uh, thinking of us in a, in a similar capacity of, say, a security. Uh, guard, a uniformed mm -hmm. person who's just there as a presence. Right. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, nothing could be uh, you know, further from the truth. Um, the, the resource officers are professional, uh, degreed uh, 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 individuals. All of them have extensive law enforcement experience. Um, I've been told by other uh, law enforcement uh, officials in our area that I probably have one of the best detective bureaus uh, in the county, and that's how you can kind of think of the resource officer program. Kind of leads me into my next question. Mm -hmm. What do you typically look for when you're looking for a resource officer? Well, you know, to even apply, you have to have five years of formal law enforcement experience. We look for individuals who have 
uh, a minimum of a four-year degree in criminal justice or a related field. Uh, the majority of the resource officers now have a master's degree in criminal justice or a related field. Uh, and we're finding now that most of the applicants that are real competitive are already in, in possession of their master's degrees. Um, and then I start looking for the extensive experience in various investigative um, departments within a law enforcement agency. Uh, juvenile investigation, drug investigation, property crime investigation, homicide investigation. Um, so the more experienced you are and the more variety of background you have, uh, you certainly elevate and that's... Which leads me to our second <coughs> guest here, Mr. Oakley. How hey, you doing, dude? Good morning. How y'all doing? Good, good. Tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Well, um, I'm presently, well, I'm from Mobile. Um, I grew up in the Tomaville community. Um, graduated from John L. LaFleur High School. <laughs> okay, John L. Great pride in that. <laughs> John L. Um, my education background, I have a master's in criminal justice, uh, which I attended Baltimore University. And I uh, also have a master's in public administration from Troy University. Um, yeah, after I graduated, uh, I went and uh, served some time with the, uh, with the military, the Air Force Reserves. Mm -hmm. um, I did uh, 20 years uh, with the Air Force Reserves uh, based out of Keesler. Hurricane Hunters, right? That's correct. And uh, also the tactical airlift uh, from the same wing there. Um, I guess I, you could say I'm a veteran of uh, uh, the first Gulf War and the second Gulf War. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's basically about, I guess, my experience. I was um, also a police officer for um, about five years. For the Mobile Police Department, you that's were in special that's operations. That's there, correct, right? yeah. and uh, where our focus was on the gangs and drugs. Right. You know? So I, I enjoyed my tenure there. Um, mm -hmm. And after I left the police department, uh, uh, I worked for the federal government, uh, where I did uh, uh, survival uh, instructions for the air crew. Um, and that's basically it. Pretty extensive history there, guy. Yeah, pretty good. I appreciate it. It right. kind of maybe segues to what you're tasked with uh, as a resource officer for the Department of Industrial and School System. I, I kind of jokingly referred to you as the safety czar for the school system. <laughs> uh, you got a particular task that you've been engaged with for the past several years. Could you share with us about that, Mr. Oakland? Yes, uh, I guess my primary responsibility, of course, is being a resource officer from day to day. Uh, my additional duty is the uh, incorporation uh, of the safety plans into the virtual Alabama uh, system. But all of that, not to cut you off, but all that falls under the National Incident Management System, right, NIMS, in other words. That's correct. Uh, basically what happened, um, you know, our department uh, started in 1999 being the school system uh, generating these safety plans uh, based on various incidents that happened, especially the Columbine incident, okay? okay. Uh, since then, um, since 9-11, uh, the terrorist attacks, uh, the federal government decided to have one unified plan, mm -hmm. uh, what they call a unified response plan. Okay. Uh, and since then, the uh, State Department of Education wanted us to adopt that plan. And basically, that plan is a systematic, proactive approach uh, or guide for departments and agencies at all levels of government, non-governmental agencies as well, uh, uh, to basically manage incidents involving threats, uh, and, and has regardless of the size, shape, or, or whatever, uh, to reduce like, uh, loss of life and property. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, and uh, what the federal government found out uh, after 9-11 is that uh, once they had those incidents uh, in the lower Manhattan area, that, that you had responders uh, from all over that actually showed up on the scene to, uh, to help and assist. Mm -hmm. And uh, those individuals that came in, uh, uh, didn't understand the, the, the jargon of the language or uh, necessarily didn't have a responsibility. So they were looking for a commonality, a uniformity in, in communication. That's correct. Okay. Let me ask you this. Uh, how did this federal directive or mandate, mandate uh, uh, begin or how did they want it disseminated? Well, what happened was is uh, the president at the time decided uh, after 9-11 um, that uh, he would establish uh, the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, and from that, uh, 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 the Department of Homeland Security bothered in seven, eight, several agencies, including FEMA. Mm -hmm. And uh, FEMA uh, was uh, governed to put together this national response plan. So in turn, um, all the uh, private and public entities uh, 
supposed to uh, go on and, and do this training through FEMA, uh, FEMA mm -hmm. uh, in regards to the NIMS certification. Okay, now, you know, Alabama Department of Homeland Security, uh, they're the ones that are, are, are directing us to create these safety plans through a mandate by the federal government. Uh, tell the viewers why is it important to have a safety plan, school safety plan? Well, for us, uh, part of our mission um, from the Safety and Security Department is uh, a safe, secure, law-abiding uh, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And um, our primary tool for that is the school safety plans. You know, mm -hmm. um, we, being the schools, want to have a, a, res a response plan, or what we call a functional plan, um, that can assist our administrators, our staff members, and also um, our students. Okay. At the state level of government, what organizations uh, within the state are responsible for the development of the virtual Alabama link. Okay, um, basically what happened with that was the the State Department of Education um, in collaboration with uh, Auburn University mm -hmm. at Montgomery and also the Alabama Homeland Security Department uh, got together and decided to uh, establish this virtual link um, and that's the primary tool. And I think they also called uh, their link or their program Safe Schools. Okay. So in turn, um, the administrators uh, of our 90 sites um, supposed to develop this unified template uh, throughout the state, and that data or information um, supposed to be, or, or we have submitted or uh, put into the uh, Virtual Alabama site. Wow, that's, uh, that's amazing, Mr. Oakley. That's, you, you've done an awful lot of work uh, with a pretty strong, significant uh, responsibility for the school system made us safer. We're going to break right now, uh, and we'll be right back. Nonviolence will start with me. Nonviolence will start with me. All across the Mobile County public school system, students are taking the pledge. I pledge to accept the responsibility of my actions. To solve problems peacefully. Respect myself and others. The 100 Days of Nonviolence Pledge. It's an initiative to help explore alternative means of stopping violence among school students. Will you take the challenge? Get involved. Take a stand. 100 Days, 100 Ways. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. And we're back. Thank you. Uh, we got some new guests uh, with us at this time. We're going to introduce to you two other resource officers who are also a part of this program and are an integral part of making the schools district safe. We have with us Mr. Tony Wiley and Mr. Lorenzo Williams. Good morning, right, guys. Good morning gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Wiley, um, I was talking with uh, Mr. Oakley briefly about some tasks that he has to serve the community and, and the, the department and the school district at large. I understand you have a, a task assigned to you that will help to make schools safer as well. Uh, that's correct, Andy. Um, over the summer, uh, Bill gave us an assignment with, along with two other resource officers. And our, uh, I guess, mission was to uh, develop a guide that's helpful for all the resource officers uh, as far as uh, meeting security needs at our schools. Okay. okay. Tony, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell the viewers, I know all about you, but tell the viewers sure. about yourself. Sure, sure. Um, uh, I'm a Mobile native, just like y'all. Uh, okay. I graduated from Mary Montgomery High School. Uh, I'm also received my degree, uh, my bachelor's degree in criminal justice from South Alabama. Uh, I was a former police officer with the city of Mobile. I uh, also uh, worked in the private security industry uh, in a supervisory role, and I've been with the school system now for 
24 years. That's you know, not as long as you, not as long as you, Andy. But close. But I do have gray hair, and you know. Yeah, we both do. That's right. Wow. Lorenzo. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How about a little bit about Lorenzo Williams and what your background is? Where where'd you come from? And I don't you met you guys doing? at all. Um, oh, that's, oh, that's, that's whatever, not me. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a native of Mobile also, a graduate of Blunt High School. I received my bachelor's degree from Faulkner University. Um, did uh, a long time with Mobile Police Department in several capacities. Um, served 28 years in the United States Air Force Reserve. Just recently finished a tour of um, duty for, in Afghanistan um, in the war on terrorism. Uh, you just retired from the Air Force. That Correct. Right? Well, congratulations, dude. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about um, bus training, and we're still talking about safety plans. We kind of finished up with Oakley earlier, but we want to phase into the bus safety plans, and you're spearheading that initiative. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, you're absolutely correct, Kirk. Um, when we were talking about the safety plan, we, we, we sat around and we said, you know, we've got other employees that we need to look at that are sometimes forgotten when we start talking about safety, and that's the bus drivers. Mm -hmm. The bus drivers get extensive training in how to operate a bus safely, but that's not what we target on. We're talking on making sure that they and the passengers that they transport are safe. Right. So we looked at several things and tried to curtail it down to uh, what we thought was important, some of the things that concerned the bus drivers. So we went out and we interviewed many bus drivers, and we took their concerns, brought them back to the table, and said, hey, this is what we need to look at. These are some of the things that they are concerned about. On a typical day, on an average day in Mobile County, Roughly, how many buses are normally on the roads in Mobile County? Approximately 730 buses on the road Approximately every day. 730, 730 buses. buses. Oh, wow, okay. All right. Wow. Now, when we look at that, we look at also the number of kids, roughly, that they're transporting. It's quite a few if you look at that, that many buses on the road. Uh, so that kind of puts an importance on bus driver training. Uh, kind of expound a little bit more on the bus driver training and what all, what else you're doing to, to facilitate that training. Well, as I said, we, we took a lot of the concerns that the bus drivers had, uh, which was some, some incidents that happened on buses, some of the incidents that happened at bus stops, mm -hmm. um, some of the things that happened as they're driving. And uh, we compiled a list of things and broke them down into modules. Okay. So we decided to put training in place to facilitate their concerns. There are some things, uh, Lorenzo, that come to mind when you saw, say, training in particular, uh, evacuating, uh, inclement weather, uh, hostile situations, and hazardous materials. Uh, those are some of the concerns that you've addressed in trying to facilitate training bus drivers and how to react and how to prepare uh, to make their clients, the, the, the riders of our buses, safe. Uh, you're absolutely correct, Andy. When you look at a bus, and I know I did, when I saw a bus driving down the street, I'm just hoping it didn't get in my way. <laughs> that was my <laughs> biggest concern. Yeah, but it's more to that. Exactly, a whole lot more to that. And w when we start looking at the incidents that happen on buses and how those bus drivers were able to mitigate those incidents, we said, wow, we need to give these people some help. So we start thinking about some things that affect our area. Weather is, is one. Tornadoes, they can pop up any time, as we know. Uh, we know that there are instances where we have people that are not necessarily happy with the bus driver or happy with the circumstances that they may be in and they may want to approach, approach a, a bus driver um, in a hostile manner. So those are just some of the things that we addressed in our training. And I'm glad you said that, Lorenzo, because I know some things that have happened in, in, in the country, uh, more specifically in Alabama, the incident that occurred in Midland uh, City in North Alabama, right. um, that kind of kind of focused on the importance of, of bus training and Correct. how to respond to threats. And from that, we initiated some some new laws right. that deal with intruders on buses. Right. Uh, do you know anything about that? Can you share anything with, with us on that? Primarily? Abs absolutely. Um, trespassing is one of the biggest things, and uh, most of our buses are equipped with devices that can detect behavior that shouldn't be done on buses. Mm -hmm. uh, the trespassing is one. Um, people who are not allowed on buses should not be on buses. That's against the law. Matter of fact, Judge, ben I mean, Governor, B Governor Bentley uh, recently passed a law that, that um, made it a Class A misdemeanor Correct. to actually board a bus 
uh, unlawfully. Correct. So from this thing that happened in Midland, it kind of spun into uh, a great need for bus safety. Right. And I think Mobile County is probably one of the few, uh, if not the only, um, uh, school system in the county right now, or in the state rather, that's actually focusing on bus safety to the degree that we are right now. Right. Just to back up a second, during our interview with the bus drivers, that was one of the things that they were concerned about. Most of those bus drivers brought up that incident. Hey, what right. do I do? How do I respond to something like that? Mm -hmm. So we got real concerned about making sure that we put something in place to make sure that they felt a little bit more comfortable with dealing with situations like that. And one of the biggest things was to make sure that what they did on the bus would facilitate them getting help from law enforcement. Right. Okay. And, and it goes back to safety planning. It goes back to having a plan. Correct. Okay. And that's something that, again, we are kind of at the top in dealing with that right now. We focused on that. We know the importance of it. We know that families want to know that their kids are safe when they're at school uh, because that's your most precious right. thing. Exactly. Your children. That's what you work for. Right. Okay. And we're here to make sure that your children go home the same way they came to school. Exactly. And it's all about safety. That's just one of the many things that we're focusing on right now. Right. Exactly. Wow, Lorenzo, that, that's hugely interesting. You know, uh, Lorenzo, Tony as well, you know, some of the things that you're doing, both of you, uh, and, and Sim as well, and the other uh, resource officers for that matter, you all are making schools safer by being proactive versus being reactive. You know, um, that guide, for example, Tony, you, you, you talked about helping administrators, and, and it wasn't just resource officers that did this, but with, you know, your 24 years, uh, my a few more years, uh, <laughs> as well as Curtis and Lorenzo and, and the other resource officers, um, your, your effort was a collaboration. It sure was. Um, from the resource officers, you know, the knowledge that they bring to the table, uh, your administrators, they would uh, have ideas that would go, man, that's a great idea right there. Mm -hmm. Something that maybe they're using in one part of the, the district that they're not using another, and we're able to share that with the, the administrators, and which makes a safer environment for all of us. So you came up with a best practices guide to help administrators and resource officers secure schools and to make sure that our schools are safe in all areas of, of, of the campus. Exactly. Well, well thanks, uh, Tony. Thank you, Andy. Uh, Lorenzo. You're welcome. Uh, we are thrilled to have, be able to present to the public some of what you saw today, an opportunity to share knowledge and information that we hope will facilitate safe schools for everyone. That when a person comes into a school building, gets on a school bus, comes into the responsibility of this school district, this department is committed to making people safe uh, have confidence that their child has an opportunity where teaching and learning can occur. That's our goal. Thank you for visiting and viewing Safe Schools.